In this video, I get to introduce you to the verb they me, which Hansen and Quinn introduces you to on pages 461 and 462. This verb is actually a me verb. It's an athematic verb. And so we're going to look at it with the usual rules most of the time. And really, it's only unusual in the first principal part, which is a me verb. Femi means say, affirm, or assert. And we're going to start using it a lot. And remember that when it's negative, ufemi, it means do not. As you learn for other me verbs, femi has a long grade and a short grade stem. The long grade is for anything that's singular and indicative and active. And the short grade is for all the other forms. So if you remember your endings for the present indicative active for me verbs, they look like this. And so we can add the long grade in the singular fe and the ending me, and then fe with the sigma on the end. Notice though that there's an iota subscript irregularly in that second person singular form. Then fe si, and then we switch to the short grade because we're in the plural. So even though we're still indicative and we're still active, we're no longer singular and we switch to the short grade and we get famen, fata, and fasi. The accents on this, as you learn for the accents for a me, are enclitic. And so the standard in the paradigm is to put the accent on the end of the word, but as you know, the forms here won't usually have an accent on them and they will follow the rules for accent and enclitics that you've learned. So we have femi, I say, face, you say, facim or facey, she says, famen, we say, fata, y'all say, and fasi or fasin, they say. Let's move on to the imperfect indicative active. So we'll need the past indicative augment, the first principal part, and we will follow the rules of long grade and short grade and add them to our me verb imperfect endings. And so we'll get augment, fe, and the new of the ending in the singular there. And then there is a extra form that holds on to an older ending in the second person singular. So we get a face which follows the rules, but a face the will also appear, which is simply another form you'll need to be able to recognize. And then there's fa, fmen, fata, and fasan, following the rule that in the plural now we'll put the augment on the short grade stem and then add the endings that we know. Accent is recessive. So the forms are ethane, I was saying, efface or efface tha, you were saying, efe, she was saying, efamen, we were saying, efata, y'all were saying, and efasan, they were saying. Now, if we go to the present subjunctive active, you will see that we're going to do something of the same thing we did with a me. If you look at the endings that we've known for a very long time for the subjunctive active, and you take off the hyphens that indicate that those are just endings, and you add the fi that we have from fe me, and put recessive accent on it, you've got the forms of the subjunctive of fe me. Fo, face, fe, fomen, feta, fosen. The optative goes back to following the me verb rules. So here are the endings that you learned to go with me verbs. And now we are no longer in the indicative. So we will use the short grade all the time and slap those iota starting endings onto the short grade along with the alternate endings. And we'll do accents that go back only as far as the iota and then follow the rules for accent. And what we get is phiane, phiase, phiae, 
Fiamen or Fiamen, Fieta or Fieta, Fiesan or Fian. And there's the optative, which of course we can't translate without context. The present participle active will have persistent accent based on the masculine nominative singular if you use recessive rules. And it will mean saying. Of course, it will do all the things that any participles that you've learned can do. And it's going to look like the participle of histamine. And that means it also looks like the aorist active participle of thematic verbs. So we get fas, fasa, fan in the nominative and vocative singular, fantos, fases, fantos in the genitive, fanti, fase, fanti in the dative, fanta, fasan, fan. You'll notice that even though accent is recessive and the last syllable on many of these forms is short. Nevertheless, the accent stays an acute and doesn't become a circumflex because that alpha is short. The same will be true in the plural of our participle. Fantas, fasai, fanta, fantone, fason, fantone, fasi, fasais, fasi, and there the circumflex does appear because that alpha is long now because of the compensatory lengthening that happens in the damn dative plural. And then finally, fantas, fasas, fanta. Attic prose actually very rarely uses this participle. And instead, if you need a participle that means saying or speaking, you'll probably see fosco, which means the same thing only appears in the first principal part. And so the participle, it would be nominative foscon, foscusa, foscon, and foscontas, foscuses, foscontas in the genitive, and then so on, according to the paradigm that you already know. But let's go back to femi. The present imperative active is going to follow all the rules that we already learned for me verb imperatives. And so there are the endings, and we'll use the short grade stem because we're not indicative. And so we'll get fathi, fato, fata, and fontone, which is going to mean say if it's second plural and we're giving a command, or let her or him or it or them say if it's in the third person. As usual, it's easy to confuse the imperative plural, third person plural, for genitive plural participles of the masculine feminine. So just remember that both are possibilities. That leaves the infinitive active. And again, we're going to use the ending that we learned for me verbs, which is going to have fixed accent, and it's going to use the short grade stem, and we get fani, and that means to say. So here you have all of the paradigm for femi, which only appears in the active and so those are all the irregular forms that you need to learn. Of course, you still need to be able to form the future and the aorist as usual, but only in the active.